White, Cochlea Tip, Bernice Jensen in Squest. Hello everyone, my name is Bernice Jensen. I work at the Kamloops Aboriginal Friendship Society office. I'm a cultural education coordinator and I work in partnership with School District 73. And today I'm going to tell you a story about how the Dreamcatcher was introduced. But before that, I'm going to let my co-workers introduce themselves because we have a number of presentations that we're going to share with you today. White Sunshade, Denisha Kawan, Jessica. Hello, my name is Jessica. I'm the youth worker at the Aboriginal Friendship Society. White, I'm Chai Squis Kwakushlafen, not Justine Manuel. I'm Justine Manuel. I work at the Kamloops Friendship Center and I'm the Elders Cultural Coordinator. Okay, so today we're going to do a project on dream catchers, but before we do the project, what we're going to do is we're going to do the, the legend of the dream catcher. And so this legend comes from the Anishinaabe people from the east. And so how the story goes is a long, long time ago, uh, there was a young man and he was having a really bad time with, with bad dreams and nightmares. And so what he thought he would do was he thought he would run away from his dreams and that when he would wake up in the morning he would still have the reoccurring bad dreams so he would run again to another location and go to sleep that night wherever it was and then wake up through the night having a bad dream so this went on for days and days finally he came to a forest and he was walking through the forest and it was getting late and he decided he would sleep in the forest. So that night, he leaned up against a log and went to sleep. And when he woke up in the morning, he was pleasantly surprised that he did not have one bad dream. While he laid there, he looked up and he saw that there was a spider web that had built its nest right above him. And he knew that there must be a sign and that the creator was giving him this message. So then he decided he was going to travel back to his village and consult with the elders. And he met with them when he returned and the elders told him, yes, this was a sign and that he needed to replicate that spider web. So when he thought about building the spider web, he thought he would used the local materials that he had in his village. He made the spider web and then he hung it up above him at night. And every night after that, he never did have a bad dream. So the story goes that when that dream catcher spider web was built, that it only lets the good dreams through and any of the bad dreams would get trapped in the spider web and in the morning, uh, it would fade away with the morning light. Now, the other thing that they did traditionally as well is a lot of the women that had their babies and young children, they would make these dream catchers. They would tie it onto the baby boards or cradles and they would have the dream catcher there as protection for the babies. And for the young children, they would also have them tied to the areas where and hang from the areas where they would sleep at night as well. So that is the legend of the dream catcher. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about the piece of the sinew and why, um, or what we use the sinew for. So for this part of the dream catcher, we're gonna use it to weave on the inside of the willow. Um, this is an example of uh, modern sinew. This is artificial. Um, but we know that sinew uh, was traditionally gathered from our big game animals uh, such as the elk, the deer, the moose, the bear, caribou, and even the buffalo. Um, so usually you can find the sinew on the back part of the animal. So sometimes they can become like quite large, quite long, and um, the longer the better sometimes. It can also be harvested on the shins of the animals. 
Um, so what you want to do once you um, take the sinew off of the animal, you want to dry it. And once you've dried it, you can use a rock to pound it, pound the sinew, and then the fibers will, once you are ready to use the sinew, you can, um, again, once I mentioned, weave it in with the, the dream catcher to make the spider web but it can also be used for sewing purposes. So we would use the sinew for sewing moccasins, gloves, uh, clothing, that type of thing. And um, usually with one piece of sinew, you can break it apart two or three times depending on how thick the sinew is. You don't necessarily need a lot of sinew because it's very tough and it's very strong and reliable to hold your, uh, your sewing together. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the harvesting protocols. So for harvesting red willow, uh, what we would have done a long time ago is we would leave an offering. When we go out onto the land and harvest it, we would go out and we would have a good thought and, and we would go out and harvest the red willow. When you harvest it, uh, I was told don't harvest the main plant get the the side branches and then the plant can continue to grow but even if they cut it right down i've gone up into the mountains and and on some of the dirt roads where the forestry uh, companies or forestry crews have gone out they have cut the red willow right down and in the winter time when i went out to harvest the red willow they were growing back up again so it's really a hardy plant and it grows back again. Uh, one of the, the things that they use the red willow for is it has medicinal purposes. So if you uh, were having some pain, aches and pains, you could harvest the red willow. And what you do is you shave off the red bark and it has a medicine a lot like your aspirin that you use for pain relieving today, pain reliever. Um, medicine today and so they would shave off the bark they put it in a cup of hot water let it steep and they could use it and drink it and it helps with the pain reliever uh, the other thing is it's good for treating inflammation it's good for mothers that have babies that have um, rashes as well baby rashes diaper rashes and so it's good for treating that it's also good for um, teenagers and adults that are affected by um, acne. What they would do is they would boil it, the, the, the branch, the bark again, they would boil it, make a, a water solution and they could wash their faces with that. The hunters also use the water, the same type of uh, step when they go out hunting and it helps um, it helps to get rid of the human scent so that when they're out on the land hunting for the big game animals, the animals don't smell them. So they will use the, the red willow for that as well. The last thing that they use the red willow for is they use it for a type of, um, they'll use the berries from the red willow and they can use it for a mouthwash for their mouths. If they have any canker sores or any, um, any problems with their mouth, they can wash it and that helps with their, their mouths as well. So now Jessica is going to tell you a bit more about the red willow. Okay, the red willow branches, um, like Bernice was saying, you want to cut off the branches from the red willow and then you can then put a bunch of these branches together and then use them to put meat or fish on top of when smoking and you can use that to smoke your meat or to smoke your fish. Um, if you, you'd want a longer piece of branch, um, if you want to make something like a fishing pole, you can do that with them. Um, or an even longer piece of branch still, and that can be used to uh, make a, a uh, when building your sweat lodge. Um, the inner bark of the red willow, um, inside past the red part, the inner bark you can use and weave together to make headbands, or you can use the inner pieces and weave together to make ropes. So it has lots of practical uses as well. Okay. So that covers our part on the red willow and the sinew and some of the uses of it. Uh, we're going to go on to the next part as well and we're going to actually make you the dream catchers now. Okay, so now we're going to harvest some, some branches. Now, 
I live near the river and unfortunately the red willow that I usually access is, is um, too far into the lagoon area or our pond and so I'm going to just harvest here which is the dogwood and I'm going to leave an offering Thank you, Mother Earth, for allowing us to come onto the land to harvest in a good way. And we are still social distancing, so we're still keeping mind of that. Now, when you harvest, like I said, you don't go through the main branch. You go off of the side. And just like that. So we've got a branch here. We're going to clean off the sides. I'm gonna get two of them for Jessica and I. I'll get one more. And then we'll go on to making the dream. Okay, so first step to making your dream catcher is you want a freshly harvested uh, stick, piece of red willow, if you can. Um, if not, what will happen to your red willow over time is uh, even in a couple days, it's gonna start to dry out. The moisture is gonna come out of that stick and without the moisture in there, you're not gonna be able to bend it. So it's gonna become very stiff and... This is a thick piece so I can't break it. That's okay. But if you try to bend it, it's just gonna snap on you. As you can see, it can't, you can't bend that into a circle or anything. So with this fresh piece, it has the moisture in there and it's easy to bend. So you just want to take it and try to make a, uh, a circle, a loop with it. And you'll take one end and wrap it under and around. And same with, uh, I'll start with this end. So you're gonna take it, wrap it around fully. And then with this other end, you also wanna wrap it in. And you kind of want to weave it and wind it until you can get the stick to stay in a nice little circle for you. So it looks like that's all I'm getting out of wrapping it, but just kind of like that so that the opposite ends of the stick weave together. And with that way, you're not going to need any um, sinew or twine or rope to tie it together. You can just weave it like that into your circle. We're good. So here we have the hoop. What I always tell the students is we use about a meter and a half. So we're using some math involved here as well. So we have about roughly a meter and I would say and a half. So we're going to use a meter and a half when we do the hoop of sinew. When you, when you start, what you need to do is you need to wrap it around the hoop and you need to tie it. You need to anchor it down. When you do that, we're ready to start doing the weaving. So here we have that done. What I tell students to do is when you're ready to start weaving, you're going to go, oh, I use my thumb and I hold it in the front and I go over the hoop and through the circle. So I use about 10, two finger spaces are 10 centimeters. I go over the hoop and through the circle. And it's a pattern that you go over and over again and you can just quickly start to create with a hitch. You're gonna go through the circle and it creates this little hitch. So you can see that it pulls tightly onto the, the hoop when you do it. Now, once I get all the way around, what you're going to do, I'm gonna make this a little bit wider because it's we're doing this video. I'm gonna make it a little bit, okay, so I go over and through the circle. When I get to the front, I can leave a little gap where I started. And from there, I take the, this part here and I can go over the string 
and through the center. Whoops, through the center. Now it creates another hitch. And I keep doing it nice and tight. I'm gonna, and I go over the string and through the center of the hoop. And as you look at it, it creates a little triangle. triangle. So I'm gonna do this, and then from there, okay, and I'm just, and you don't need a needle or anything, but you're just gonna to have to make sure that your string is, is pointy. So I'm gonna go as fast as I can to do a couple of, a couple of them. So I'm going around again over the string and through the hoop forward towards you you're pulling it and so I've got a couple more to do yet before I get to before I get to the uh, front part so here we go again and once I get to the once I get to this part I'll show you I've got two more to do yet and then I'll show you the next part. Okay. Now I'm going back over the last one. Once I get to here, now I'm going through the triangle. So here, whoops. We're going to go through the triangle now and we keep going around and around and around what's going to happen eventually is we're creating kind of like a spiral so again math there's uh the spiral that we're creating the circle's going to get smaller okay and there it is okay pause for a second Okay, so now we have made the pattern. I'm going to end it by putting a pony bead in the middle. To end your dream catcher, you will go, you're gonna keep your, your sinew together, go through the same, uh, the, the same spot and cinch it three times and it creates a knot but keep your sinew nice and tight. And I'm gonna do it one more time through the hoop again, and then I'm gonna cinch it. So here we are, there's the knot, and it tightens up as well. I'm gonna cut it off. Now this looks like a natural center for the top loop. I'm going to tails together one side hoop on the other go through the center do a loop here's the hanger now the bottom ones this is artificial oh, sorry this is leather lacing I'm gonna do three of them tails together hoop on one, uh, tails on one side, hoop on the other. There's one on this side, do another one. This is about just over a, a foot or 30 centimeters as well. So there's a lot of math involved for this as well. This is also a great art project to do for art classes. And this project could be done at home. You can find something to create the hoop and use yarn, string, anything that you have and you can do a dream catcher. If you have feathers or beads, bonus. But as you can see, we have a lot of different beads here and we also have feathers. So to do, now I've got the, the string at the bottom, the hanger here. I'm going to get a pony bead and I put the two pieces together slide the pony bead through there we go now with the feather we have a little tiny feather 
We're going to slide the pony bead up and all you have to do is slide the feather through the pony bead. And I'm going to do one for each side, but while I'm finishing this up, Justine is going to talk about uh, the medicine wheel and colors. Yeah, so um, sometimes when you want to make a dream catcher, you can choose any colors that you want. But here we have an example of the medicine wheel colors. So we have white, um, white, yellow, red, black. So the white is the north piece, yellow is representing the east, uh, red is representing the south, and black is representing the west. Uh, so it's always good to just um, keep the balance with that. and. Um, with the medicine wheel, we also have the four stages of life, which represent um, infant, youth, adult, and elder. And then it also represents the four seasons, so winter, spring, summer, and fall. And then we also have the four aspects, which are the mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual. So sometimes if you want, you can add these different colors onto your dream catcher. Um, just to remind yourself to uh, make sure that you're taking care of yourself in all of those aspects. Okay, so there is the dream catcher. So I would like to say, Kukschatchum, thank you all for coming and joining us today. I hope you enjoyed yourself, and I'll let the ladies say bye as well. Merci, thank you. Thank you. Um, a weekend.